Here's a quick video on how to use the zoom blur filter in Affinity Photo. First, because it's a destructive filter, I'm going to duplicate the pixel layer named background with Command J on Mac, Control J on Windows. Then I'll go to Filters, Blur, Zoom Blur. On the dialog, I'll drag the radius slider up to increase the amount of blur. The Zoom Blur has an origin point and you can easily change this by click-dragging on the document view. I want to position it over the light source in the image. The easiest way to do this is to actually reduce the radius value, reposition the origin, then bring the value back up. I'll go for a radius of around 50 pixels, then click Apply to commit the filter. Now I want to blend this zoom blur effect over the top of the original image, so I'll change this layer's blend mode to screen. This gives me quite a stylized, light burst look, but the image is now too bright, and I may also want to reduce the overall strength of the effect. I'll click on the cog icon here to access the blend options dialog, and on the source layer ranges graph, I'll drag the left hand node all the way down. This will blend away the darker areas of the layer with the zoom blur applied, reducing the brightness and also making the effect more subtle. I'll show you another example of how you might use this filter. With this document, I'll duplicate the background layer once again, then apply the zoom blur filter. I'll drag the radius up all the way, then position the origin so it's just below the sun. You can actually go higher than 100 pixels for the radius control. You just have to manually type a value in. I can, for example, type 300, then use the return or enter key, and the real-time preview will update. I'll make sure I'm happy with the position, then click Apply. Now I'll add a mask layer, using this option on the Layers panel, and I'll select the Paintbrush tool with B, change the hardness to 0%, and increase the brush width. Because my brush color is set to black, I can then subtract from this mask and reveal the original image information underneath the zoom blur layer. By hiding these areas, I can achieve this abstract effect where the sky and foreground detail has a blur applied to it. I can, of course, hide this zoom blur layer at any time to see the original image, then show it again to see the final result. And there we go, a couple of example use cases for the zoom blur filter. Thank you for watching.